Welcome to Public Forum, a community outreach program produced at North Idaho College on the shores of Lake Coeur d'Alene. Featuring guests from around the globe addressing a wide variety of subjects, Public Forum serves to educate and enlighten. Please join host and moderator, political scientist Tony Stewart, in welcoming today's guest. Last week we kicked off a two-week series uh, and we're kicking off something else. We are starting here in August. Uh, with the Jubilee celebration of 75 years of the existence of North Idaho College. Public and on the first program, we went from its inception in September 1933 up to end of the 1950s. And on today's show, we will take you through uh, starting in the 1960s up until the present time of this uh, uh, great institution and this celebration. I would like to say to you that from this date all the way through till next May at commencement, There'll be many activities at North Idaho College and around the community and people throughout our viewing area and our neighbors uh, across the border are welcome to come and certainly lots of information is available uh, to celebrate many, many different events. Uh, and a book has been written uh, and is now available called The Gathering Place, A History of North Idaho College. In a minute we'll tell you how to get that. But I welcome back to the program Sheila Wood who is the former uh, English instructor at North Idaho College and that department, one of the faculty, and she was on the Board of Trustees. And it was her idea to have this great celebration. And next to her is Fran Barr, who's with the English department as the faculty member and was the author of this book. Welcome back. We had a great time last week, and we look forward to this week. And we have our regular panelists. Uh, first of all is Janelle Burke, who's an attorney in the state of Idaho. And next to her is Erna Reinhardt, who is the director of public relations at North Idaho College. And Janelle will ask the first question. Well, Fran, let's start with you today okay. um, and ask you, what was life like for students in the 60s at North Idaho College? Describe the campus a little bit. What size was it? Maybe who were some of the faculty or president, that kind of thing. What was going on? Well, it's really interesting. In the early 60s, um, uh, it was a lot like the 50s. Um, uh, students were quite conservative. Uh, they were interested in wearing pants and shorter skirts, but uh, um, the uh, Dean of Women thought that that was inappropriate, so Bermuda shorts and pants suits and such things were absolutely not um, acceptable. That's in the early 60s. By the late 60s, things had changed quite a bit. You know, we have our go-go boots and uh, Vietnam. I mean, so much change going on. So during that decade, oh boy, from the beginning to the end, we're looking at two very different things. And the campus looked what like what, Sheila, do you think? Uh, they had, there was the main classroom, classroom building, uh, and most students probably took their classes in that building. In Lee Hall, and there was the wing Kildow, the library. Um, in 1960-61, the new dorm had been built, Shepherd oh. Gridley dorm had been built, and the, a new sub administer student union. So um, we, we had our, our campus was growing, but it was going to, in the next period of time, it's going to grow a lot. You're going to see a huge expansion. Erna Reinhardt. In just a few minutes, we're going to go through some wonderful slides with some ex explanation of what happened through those last few decades. But just before we get to that, Sheila, this has been a really passionate project for you. And if you could share with us and all of our viewers, why was this book, why is this book so important to North Idaho College, but also why is it important for any college or university to document their history? I believe that much of what happens in the beginning steers the development of the college as it grows and changes. And I think it's important for people to understand how that origination took place so that they can understand why the college has grown as it has. For us, our college has grown organically in step with this community. The community came, stepped up to the plate and helped its students in the very beginning. And what you see is this give and take, back and forth relationship where the college meets the needs of, of the community and the community gives to the college and it's a, it's a beautiful mutual relationship. I think there were so many times when you were a trustee when you could have shared the book with someone to say please in order to understand North Idaho College completely mm -hmm. 
read this. And what the book documents very well is that development at the state level. Uh, much, much of the finance, the financial picture that you see today, you'll see that development, that e evolution of how it came to be. And I think people, community members, will better understand how it came to be. Great. Fran, we have more photographs, and uh, we'll go through those real rapid. I think we have 34 this time, but our viewers would like to see the visuals. So let's put up the first uh, photograph, and then you can take us through these. I believe the staff, there we go. Okay, um, as I mentioned, um, we're in the 1960s now, and if you were watching last week, I showed you a, a slide of a dance where People were wearing suits and ties and very formal clothing, and now suddenly you will see go-go <laughs> boots, short skirts, uh, quite a difference. So that was the 60s. We'll move right on. Um, all right, Sheila mentioned the new dorm. Uh, you can see that on the right side of the slide. On the left is the new wing of the uh, Lee Hall, uh, which students used as the library. Okay. I included this slide because it is so quintessential uh, college student. Um, I think in the background we have the new uh, student union building and these students are getting ready for a football game. Next slide. Okay. Um, what happened was in 1962, uh, Mr. Kildow, President Kildow, uh, resigned, and so Perry Christensen, who had been a member of the faculty for many years, uh, took the reins. Uh, he had also been a mayor of uh, Coeur d'Alene. Next slide. Now, I mentioned there were a lot of changes in the 60s, and as I read through the newspapers, people were most excited about this calculator. <laughs> it weighed... Uh, Not a computer, a calculator. Calculator. <laughs> it weighed 28 pounds, and it had a brain, as the way they <laughs> described it. So that was quite a big deal. Um, in 1968, Perry Christensen, Christensen retired, and so Barry Schuler came to North Idaho College. He was also like Brakemeyer from the Midwest. I included the uh, image on the right because uh, he loved toy trains, and he would each Christmas have young, you know, the children of faculty and staff come to his house, and they would have a party. Next slide. One of the early programs in the six, well, in the early 70s that was so successful has been our nursing program. And I think one thing interesting about this picture is the variety of ages of the, of the students from, you can see quite young, uh, probably to in 50s. Which continues to true day. Yeah, we it's have a very large uh, effective nursing program here mm -hmm. in a new facility. And a new facility, yes. Um, early in the 70s, um, Pack River Company, I believe it was called, uh, tried to build six condominiums right on the beach, would be to the south of the college. And that was quite a to-do in the community. Uh, of course, the college didn't want that there. Uh, Tony Stewart, our very own Tony Stewart, um, led, um, let's see, what exactly were you guys doing? It was doing? a committee of senior citizen college students to save the, the beach. Save the beach, and that's right. And it did come under the ownership of the college. Yes, and uh, the college actually bought the entire beach for $260,000 in 1977. We understand it's worth about $50 million today. <laughs> yes. It was the second Alaska purchase. Yes. <laughs> Our best deal. Next slide. Oh, here we have Tony Stewart again. Uh, as a youngster, as a young faculty youngster, he was always willing to do fundraisers, and in this particular one, he was going to eat a goldfish. For muscular dystrophy. Yes, yes. for mu muscular dystrophy. Did it stay down? Uh, yes, along with a, a Coca-Cola and, uh, <laughs> and some uh, uh, alka student getting in, it really created a terrible problem. <laughs> Every year we raised thousands of dollars for muscular dystrophy at that time and gave to Jerry Lewis. Yes. Oh. 
our next photograph. Yes, our next slide um, is um, when Tony and uh, some other people at the college started a convocation series called the Popcorn Forum. And at that same time, uh, or near that same time, was the birth of this NIC Public Forum. Uh, in the images, you see on the right um, our Mona Klinger uh, um, acting as um, Mother Teresa. And on the left is Senator Baker. Senator Howard Baker at the end of the Watergate hearings, yes. Yes, uh, at the end of the Watergate hearings. And he here. Came, he came to four colleges in the West, three universities in the Southwest, and here to report on the Watergate at the end of it. And we had the largest uh, crowd in, that we've ever had at a popcorn mm -hmm. forum, which was held in the gym. And it was very fortunate that we got him, and it was because of Tony Stewart. Next slide, please. Well, the students were having fun, and one of their favorite activities was a catapult contest, um, and they competed with uh, students from Montana and, I believe, Washington State and other places. And what they would do would be to take a beer keg and fire it, and the person who uh, fired it the farthest <laughs> Uh, would win, and they wanted to get into the Guinness Book of World Records. And two faculty members at the time, Duke Snyder and Jim McLeod, had this idea. Yeah. All right. Uh, Sheila had alluded to the fact that in the 70s um, there was a, a profound growth of the college, and you can see here that three of our key structures uh, on this campus today were built then. Um, Cider, which is the, um, oh, I'm drawing a blank. Math and Science. Yeah, Math and Science Building was built in 1974. Headland, which is the Professional Technical Building in 1976. And Boswell Hall, which is for Music and Arts and Communication in 1979. The two key people, two of them was on the Permanent Building Fund Council, Representative uh, Emery Headland and Senator Art Manley were responsible for really finding those funds. And one of them's named after Emory Headland. And it was Emory Headland who got us on the Permanent Building Fund yeah. list. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In, uh, so the 70s and the 80s were years of tremendous growth. In 1987, uh, President Schuler resigned, and Bob Bennett became our next president. Another um, Midwesterner. Another Midwesterner. Yes, we have a theme going here. <laughs> next slide. Um, the 80s were years, the 80s and 90s, were years of uh, na growing national recognition. And one that we're most proud of is our um, Virginia Tinsley Johnson, who won the William H. Meardy Award, which is a national award for faculty teaching excellence. Nationwide. And yeah. Nationwide. Here she is presenting, I believe it's Mr. Meardy, with an uh, Idaho Spud uh, lay. <laughs> Only Virginia would know how Only to do Virginia that. Only Virginia would know how to do that. Well, this next one's a great story. Do you want to tell no, that no, story? You go right ahead. Well, um, I'm trying to remember what I can. Um, it was Virginia's idea. Yes. Oh, to yes. make you us, tell it. Well, she she decided we would be the Andrus sisters, and we would perform for Governor, for Governor Cecil, for Governor, Andrus. For Governor Cecil and that's Andrus. The governor there. But we had a we had a strategy. We we wanted to, of course, we wanted our state appropriation to be as <laughs> high as possible. So we did what we could. <laughs> and, and when he came saying, I've seen him many times since then, of course he lives in Boise, and every time I see him he asks about the Andrews sister. <laughs> you can see a much younger Sheila, the third person from the right there. It was a wonderful day. And yes. there's Jeannie Emerson, and uh, Fran Barr's hiding back there. <laughs> And who is dancing with Governor Sandy Bershears? Sandy Bershears. At one point, the governor had a rose in his mouth that they gave yes. him. <laughs> I believe he has it there, doesn't yeah. he? <laughs> Next slide, please. Um, one of the things that Dr. Bennett was really uh, committed to, I thought, 
was to uh, finding ways to bring money into the college. And um, a foundation project that, that uh, came about, um, I think uh, it was Steve Shank's idea, was the really big raffle, which is a house built by the carpentry program, which is raffled each year. You get for $100, you get a ticket. And yep. I think that most times it's about $300,000 home. Mm -hmm. It continues. Yes. And the next slide. Um, during uh, Dr. Bennett's early years, uh, he also uh, brought about the Workforce Training Center. And what that center does is uh, community development. All kind of training, and it's in, in Post Falls. Yes, mm -hmm. and it's in Post Falls. Next slide. In 1998, uh, Dr. Bennett left and uh, Michael Burt came. He was uh, from Texas and a kind of an urban um, sort of um, president, a little bit different tenor for us at the college. And a great supporter of diversity. Yes, indeed. As you will see in the next slide. Uh, one of the things that had happened, it was sort of, um, oh, there was an interim president between Dr. Bennett and our new president, uh, was a nine-point agreement, which was agreement between the Coeur d'Alene tribe and the college to begin forging a much closer connection. Sheila was on the board of trustees at that time, but today we have a powwow each year and um, we also have a Native American Studies program. Um, there's plans in the making to build a longhouse. It has been a great way of bringing the Coeur d'Alene tribe back to the college. And Sheila could tell you too, as a member of the board, that uh, trustee Jeannie Gibbons, who's a member of the Coeur d'Alene tribe, was very instrumental in helping with these negotiations. Yep. The next slide. Well, our pride and joy, our newest building is the Meyer Health Science Building uh, that was built in 2005. And um, it's been um, quite a project and we have um, uh, all of our nursing and many of our science programs in that building today. We have today. very strong, uh, not only nursing, but our pre-med and all very strong and that's in that building. And now you're gonna tell how some money came to that building. Next slide, yes. Um, um, the capital campaign was very strong and uh, one of the gifts to the college was from Steve and Judy Meyer who uh, gave the college $1 million to uh, set up the technical uh, equipment, no, equipment no. yes, in the... Um, and Judy is a member of the sure. Board of Trustees and she also used to be chair of the State Board of Education. Yes. Next slide, please. And today, um, we now have a new president, uh, our first woman president, Dr. Priscilla Bell. Next okay. slide, please. This is the 2007 graduating class. I thought this was such a beautiful image because it shows the joy and exuberation and the numbers of students that we are having in our graduating class um, currently. There's about six times more in that graduating class than there were in the original class uh, back in 1933. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. Next slide. Um, what I wanted to do was to go back and do a few then and now photographs. Um, the first basketball team um, won or, or beat Gonzaga 29 to 27 in one of their <laughs> first um, games and I thought that was remarkable. I don't think As, that would happen today. But yeah. <laughs> we beat As, the Bulldogs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but as you know, uh, we still have a strong basketball program and we're very proud of. Um, next slide. We also had a, uh, an original basketball women's program, and today we again have a strong women's program. Next slide. 
I think uh, most people, if they've lived in North Idaho very long, have um, heard of North Idaho College's wrestling program. We've had many national championships. Uh, I believe I'm correct to say that, that we've won more national community college championships than any other wrestling team in America. I, I think that's true. Erna says yes. So. Mm -hmm. Yes. Next slide. Um, we um, in the 1970s, and I can't remember which, uh, Title IX became national law, and it was at that time that women's programs um, became um, much more, what, well, we have a lot more of them on campus, mm -hmm. prominent on campus. Uh, we had one woman who played on the men's tennis team, and Tony knows uh, her about her. Judy Hyinga was the first woman mm -hmm. to ever play at the Men's National Community College Tournament. And in the regular season, she was um, uh, won a majority of her matches against men. And so it was, and she was only about 5'3", and she was a great tennis player. Wow. Next slide. Um, today we also have women's softball, soccer, and um, all of these teams, including the volleyball, which we didn't mention from the last slide, have been very strong. Mm -hmm. Next slide. Uh, I didn't want to short uh, the um, arts and culture. Uh, we had a wonderful band um, the very first year of the college, and um, this is just uh, the other picture in there is a picture from the 70s, but we have a very strong music program at Isn't the college. That Robert Singletary. Yeah, directing. that is Roger, Robert Singletary in the middle there. We here. also have um, a very strong choral program. They used to call it uh, Glee Club, and today, of course, it's choir. Uh, many of you, uh, if you've been to the North Idaho College Library, have seen the absolutely remarkable sculpture made by Joe Jonas, who was a longtime art instructor at NIC. It's in three panels, and it kind of traces the history of North Idaho. Uh, if you haven't seen it, it's certainly worth a visit. And it took Joe three years to do that. Yes. It's remarkable. Yes. Next slide. Um, Obviously, we still have uh, drama, and we have a strong visual arts program, which we're very proud of. Next slide. Everyone in our viewing audience has been at this. <laughs> <laughs> Art on the green. Uh, I could hardly um, end this, you know, this program without talking about Art on the Green. It was started in the 60s, and uh, today there are hundreds of thousands of people who attend every year they in They say it's over 50,000 50, a year. It's uh, the last weekend in August, didn't it? Oh, I thought it was more than that. first weekend in August. I thought it was more than first that. first weekend. Well, you know, because you're very involved. It's first mm -hmm. weekend in August. Uh-huh. Yes. yes, and it is. Janelle's very dedicated to that. Um, the last slide you're seeing here is the gathering place. Um, it was originally the Coeur um, summer camp. Then it became the Fort Sherman, and now it is North Idaho College, and it has brought together hundreds of people, um, and and uh, it interacts beautifully with the community. Um, I think this college has um, a great future. And Dr. Michael Berkman this year always went around saying, in his fun way. But it's the only college in Idaho with a lake and a beach. That's with right. With 3,200 feet of beach. With that, we'll turn back to Janelle Burke. Thank you, Tony. Uh, Sheila, would you please tell us how to get a, co a copy of this wonderful book? It is just wonderful. And so how can people get a copy for themselves? They can come down to campus and go to the bookstore and buy one for $39.95. Or they can get one online um, by by um, going to the NIC website, which is www.nic.edu, and there is a link that they can um, click on, and it will take them to the bookstore where they can order a book. And I just want to add that we forgot to mention this last week, but this is really, really important. Five dollars from each book goes to a scholarship right. fund for oh. students, and that is money is being managed by our wonderful and, and very well-run North Idaho College Foundation. So $5 from each book goes to a scholarship for a student. Anna Reinhardt. 
Go ahead. Next question. Anything that you guys want to add? Well, we didn't get to tell very much about why we called it the gathering place, but I guess that Should was I? quite evident through our, uh, through Fran's discussion today, that it began by the by the Coeur d'Alene tribe gathering, hosting um, celebration every summer for all the other regional tribes, gathering them all in. And this college, I believe it is no accident that it landed on the very same ground because our mission and purpose is to gather in as many people in as many ways. And as Tony pointed out, we now have, we grew from maybe 55 students now to over 4,500 and many more than that if you count the workforce training, plus outreach centers in Sandpoint and Bonners and the Silver Valley. And now that we're online with online classes, why the limits to gather people in, there are no more limits. I just want to say thank you to both of you because I, I have watched you, how much work this has taken on both of your parts. I know that you have worked tediously, if that is a word, uh, for years on this project and the college and the community and many of us are the beneficiaries of your great hard work and thank this you. book is just going to be around forever so it's wonderful. Thank you for everything that you've done to make this possible. And we have a little time left and this is an impossible question but I'll ask it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Never been shy to do that. Of all of these years of study, what is the one uh, discovery that you've made that has been most impressive to you or the most surprising to you, Fran? Only one. <laughs> well, <laughs> I think um, the thing that has impressed me most is that uh, the community and the college are one. I mean, there it is a community college, and what happens here happens in the community. What happens in the community happens here, and um, the college means so much how to about, everyone. How about you? Well, I think George Ives said it best. George Ives, former faculty member, English faculty member, said it best when he said, in actuality, the experience that unfolds at NIC is all about the people. And he didn't say it exactly in those words. But what you find as you do the research is that it's bricks and mortar, but what it really is is people touching people and gathering people in. And I would add that uh, because of um, lecture series and drama and music and this television program and things, the, the borders are not very narrow anymore. We reach no. out across the Pacific Northwest and throughout Canada. And so it's been a great pleasure to see that happen. And so this community college is really reaching out to people all over the country. And our collection of libraries is rather remarkable. Ladies and gentlemen, we hope you'll join us during this nine months to many celebrations here. And you can certainly contact North Carolina College to find out and Erna Reinhardt can sure tell you. Until next week, please have a good week. I am Tony Stewart. Recorded on the campus of North Idaho College, Public Forum is the longest running in-house college production on PBS. Each episode is pre-recorded live and is an educational outreach from North Idaho College. Please join us at this same time next week for another edition of Public Forum on this public television station.